Don't talk. No talking. I'll feed you in a little bit. This is a bad idea. Dude, I'll feed you in two seconds. On that note, I've got exciting news, guys. We did it again. For the second year in a row, we've been able to raise 200 plus bushel corn on our irrigated circles without applying any nitrogen or any phosphorus. And that has huge implications for us, the United States, and the world in general as it pertains to regenerative agriculture. Regenerative agriculture is something that's impacting not just our small farm in Western Kansas. Regenerative agriculture is taking off all over the world. In last week's video, we talked all about regenerative agriculture and how we're applying it in our farming operation. This week, I wanna talk about why does it matter? Why does it matter that we're raising 200 plus bushel corn without any fertilizer applied to our field? Why does it matter that we're doing regenerative agriculture now instead of traditional agriculture, which my family has done for over 100 years in this very county? Well, it matters for a lot of reasons, and that's what today's video is about. And this is what we all feel Let's just not deny it Something pulls and it tears In the deepest place This is what we all know Why must we still fight it? It's time to open our eyes And acknowledge the writing on the wall Today's episode is sponsored by Soilworks Go to SoilWorksLLC.com And check out their awesome products Like GSR Calcium and Bio5 that's SoilWorksLLC.com. First of all, it matters because it has a huge impact on farmers' pocketbooks. Let's take the cost of fertilizer, for example. In the United States, in the last 12 months, fertilizers have more than doubled in cost. And that's a huge impact on us in the United States. But as you across the world know, fertilizer prices are cheapest in the United States. You guys in other countries are feeling the pinch way more than we are in the United States. And that affects not just farmers, but also the everyday person who goes to the grocery store and is seeing higher prices and higher prices and higher prices on everything they buy. So if we can get the word out on what regenerative agriculture is, and we can convince enough farmers that this is the type of farming they need to be doing, that they want to be doing, that's better for them, that's better for the environment, and better all around, and can save them a ton of money, that's why this video matters. We need to get this message out to as many farmers as possible so that every farmer has the opportunity to know that they have options out there outside of what they've been doing that will help them save a lot of money. It matters because regenerative agriculture is changing farming from the inside out because topsoil is immensely important and we lose topsoil every single year to erosion events, major wind events and major rain events. Since tillage began 160 years ago, estimates show that we've lost 57.6 billion metric tons of topsoil in the United States. Worldwide, it's estimated that we lose 24 billion tons of topsoil every single year. 24 billion tons is the equivalent of every person on the earth having their own pickup and being able to fill the pickup bed full of topsoil. That is a lot of topsoil, and that is scary, especially since to build topsoil Estimates show, the best estimates, scientists argue on this, but the best estimates are that it takes a hundred years to build an inch of topsoil. This is how we build topsoil, through the roots. The plant's roots are supposed to, in a healthy system like this, they're supposed to have dreadlocks on them. These dreadlocks are formed when a plant's roots put out exudates. These exudates are signal, chemical signals that go out through the soil and tell mycorrhizal fungus and bacteria to bring the plant the micronutrients it needs to grow a healthy plant. But that's also how we build topsoil. So when it's, uh, it's sending out those signals, it's secreting a glomulin or, or a glue. And those glues bind soil particles together and give us this structure that we're seeing here on the roots. So this, these are the, the dreadlocks that you want to see. And earlier, when we grabbed this other root system, you can see the fine root hairs. Now, this was in a harder part of the field where there was compaction layer, but you can see still see the root trying to put out those fine root hairs that are going to be attracting the mycorrhizal fungus and the bacteria to bring it the micronutrients it needs. 
But like I said, that's also how we build our topsoil. These fine root hairs over time, putting out enough of those exudates and aggregates over time builds our topsoil. But in a traditional agricultural system, when we till, we kill the bacteria and we kill the fungus that the plant needs to grow a healthy uh, root system. And with phosphorus and nitrogen, we actually, actually hinder root exudate growth. So in traditional farming, if we're causing all this erosion, how many more years do we have to be able to farm the way we've been farming in the past? And that's why this video matters, because regenerative agriculture builds topsoil. It takes a long time, but it's a, it's a farming practice that will allow us to create topsoil rather than lose it in these wind events and these major rain events. This video matters because with traditional farming practices of tilling, over applying synthetic FOSS, over applying nitrogen, we are growing less nutrient dense foods than we did in the 1950s. That's ridiculous! Check the article in the show notes. The same way that we build topsoil with the root exudates and the aggregates is the same way that we get micronutrients to the plant. So when the root sends out those signals and it attracts mycorrhizal fungus and bacteria to bring the plant the micronutrients it needs, that's the process that the plant needs to grow a healthy fruit, vegetable, or grain. So in traditional agriculture, where we till a lot, we're killing the bacteria and the fungus that the plant needs to take up micronutrients and to have a healthy crop. So we have to over apply synthetic fertilizer for the plant to grow. But when we do that, the plant has nitrogen, the plant has synthetic phosphorus and potassium, but nothing else. So that's why it's immensely important to be getting our systems into regenerative agriculture because farmers need to be growing the healthiest fruit, grain and vegetables for you, the consumer, so that you can be having the healthiest foods available to you to live a healthy lifestyle. This video matters because with regenerative agriculture, we're actually bringing back biology. We're bringing back life. Since 2016, every single year, I see more and more life coming back to our farm. It started in 2020 when I saw our first earthworm on our irrigated circles, and now our circles are full of earthworms. And now I've even found our first earthworm on our dryland field. Those things get me incredibly excited. Last year was the first year that we saw a dung beetle come back. And now I've seen dung beetles all over our fields. Seeing the life come back is one of the things that gets me the most excited. When it comes to regenerative agriculture, I think it's one of the most overlooked things. So when we compare this circle over here to that circle over there, the difference in life was huge. So in this circle over here, we were able to interseed cover crops into our corn. That circle over there, we thought we had too much weed pressure, so we did not interseed cover crops. And the results were shocking. I had wasn't even thinking about the implications of buckwheat and flax when we put it in this field. But the buckwheat and the flax flowered, and those flowers brought in bees, and they brought in ladybugs. Our field was full of life full of these bugs, full of bees and ladybugs. This field over here did not have the population of ladybugs and bees. This field, we did never spray for spider mites. This field was overran with spider mites. We sprayed it and we didn't even kill the spider mites even after spraying them. Being able to see what the biology is doing and the benefits to our field are amazing. Also, we have to remember the plight of bees. Bees are going extinct. That's ridiculous. It's not outrageous, it's in the notes. If we can be in a system where we're building life and bringing habitats back to our cornfield that are gonna support life for ladybugs, that are gonna support life for bees, that are gonna bring earthworms back, that are gonna bring dung beetles back. Oh, hey, real quick, get those butterflies if they come back. How big of a positive impact does that have on our world if we as farmers are the ones who are the biggest contributor to life that there is on the planet? Man, that sounds like some woke liberal bullshit. Actually, that was a comment I had in one of my YouTube videos, but I'm not woke. To me, caring about God's creation is not woke. I love the verse in Psalms 24 that says, the earth is the Lord's and all it contains, the world and those who dwell in it, for he is founded upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. That verse is important to me because it's telling me that God created me and he created the world. And to me, if he created me and he created the world, I need to be a good steward of the things that he's created and take care of all the things that he's put in my possession. And to me, 
That ain't woke this. Everything I say today in this video, we're going to have the articles and the scientific research that backs up these claims I'm making. That concludes today's video. Thank you so much for watching and keep pursuing soil health.